pray. Father, we bless your name tonight. Yes. Give you glory, honor yes. that you alone deserve. Yes. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the sea, in your name is worthy. Yes. Oh, Father, we pray tonight that you may be with us. We pray tonight that you may teach us your ways. We pray tonight, Father God, as we learn your word, we may open our hearts and minds, Father God, so we can learn wonderful things from you. And Father God, that we don't just learn it to have information, but Father God, that we learn it to be transformed. Father, so that we can do the things that is in your word, Father God. For as we see in the book of Samuel, obedience is better than sacrifice. So Father, help us to obey your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We're back at Bible study. We had one week off. Um, before I start, I wanted to, I wanted you guys to look at this. Remember, I told you that the book of Samuel's, um, the author is the author is anonymous, and I told you according to Jewish um, tradition. Um, they said, some would say Samuel is the author. And I found this here that kind of yeah. put some credence to that. In First Chronicle chapter 29, verse 29, not just Samuel, but it says, as for the events of King David's reign, right? Yeah. Because the, book, the two books is about David, right? right? As for the events of David's reign, um, King David's reign from beginning to end they are written in the records of Samuel right the records of Nathan the prophet who came and spoke to David about his um, yeah. um, um, affair with Bathsheba and then the records of God the seer so I mean we know that the, we know that everything that happened in Israel at that time were well recorded right uh, they may not be the one who assembled it and put it into one book. But what this is saying, and I think this is the same thing we were saying a lot of time too, right? They recorded the event. Um, and, 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 and a scribe probably come together and put it all together. So, but in some ways, if you want to say that, yeah, Samuel had something to do with it, we can be certain now, yes, he did have something have put notes down okay. that if if there was a scribe um all I, all I know is that the question i had asked is he died in first sin right then what happened so then we know that they and pick it up right yeah. and we know that god yeah. pick it up it's just right? like joshua right earlier where they he was writing it down who wasn't it joshua that was writing it down well they all wrote yeah they all wrote down yeah, so what I'm saying is, is that they, they probably were not like the author, the scribe that put it together, but we can be certain that they had something to do with, with the book. See, nothing is new under the sun. Taking minutes at a meeting is, has always been around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Taking minutes has always been around. Yes, but did they have Venn diagrams and like... Hey, they yeah. might have had something similar. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, what's a spell yeah. check? Spell check? Spell check. Yes. <laughs> it's called your neighbor. They could spell better. The <laughs> person next to you. I have a spell check. I have a spell check in the around. It's called Sharon. <laughs> Sharon's told me about that. So, so me, uh, what we're saying is, um, let me go right back to it real quickly. I just wanted to make that reference. So when I was teaching first Samuel, we said that it's anonymous. Um, but there are some Jewish tradition that um, assigned it to, to Samuel. Um, but I said something my teacher used to my, my teacher used to say in seminary. This is like in um, um tradition, right? That's a Latin word which means you know you take the thing, the word from the beginning or the character that starts the the book or the play, and you name it. Like for instance, when we said when we go to say we say let's say Amazing Grace, that's the way it starts. So that's in it. Um, you know, authorship, right, and naming, right, but but I found out as I was reading in First Chronicle chapter twenty nine, verse twenty nine, that Samuel did have some things to do with the book of Samuel, right? Mm -hmm. So, well then, uh, so just we're just gonna read it as 
as the event of King David's reign, from the beginning to the end, they are written in the records of Samuel. Right? The seer, the records of Nathan. Because one of the problems that I had was Samuel died in 1 Samuel. Then who wrote? So, but we know that Nathan pick it up, and then God pick it up. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. I wish you guys had come earlier. <laughs> so I have to repeat myself. I'll say that again. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, two, two questions. I see that Nathan's prophet mm -hmm. and Samuel and Gad are seers. Mm -hmm. Is it an interchangeable word? Are they the same thing? Which one? Uh, oh, seer and word. Yeah. Um, huh. Is it the way they receive the prophecy? Like the seer? Yeah, I, I, have, I have to take a look at that to give you the right answer. I don't want to just say something. I don't know the reason why I don't say prophet and spirit. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'll, I'll take a look at that next week. I'll give you that answer. And the second question is, have any of these records survived that we know of, or are they gone, lost to history? All the damn records are... Yeah, well, well, I, don't think, I don't think anyone has primary copies. Yeah, but they do have copies that are of old, right? Of old, yeah. Okay. When yeah. they discovered the Dead Sea Scrolls, which books were in it? Because I remember hearing that when they discovered those, it was 1947, that they discovered the Dead Sea Scrolls, and what they found was word for word our Bible now. Yeah, absolutely. So 99%. Yeah. 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 So I was just wondering which books that they, was. They, you know? Well, um, it's not just the Dead Sea Scroll, right? Right, right? right. Actually, there was a young shepherd on a mountain who found um, the Bible, right? And then a few pages started burning to keep warm. Oh, and all of a sudden, he's like, that might be an important book, right? <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Expensive fuel. Remember. Yeah. I, I can't remember, like, if, if it was the entire okay. Bible, but, um, yeah, but it was significant. All right, I have a lot to do tonight to finish with first set, right? I'm not gonna do much review, but I will go just back a little bit, uh, back a little bit, okay? So we said, according to first Samuel chapter 13, verse 13 to 14, um, God rejected Saul, okay? You have done a foolish thing, Samuel said. You have not kept the command of the Lord your God, God gave you. If you had, you would have established your kingdom over Israel for all time. But now your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him ruler over his people. All right? So now what, I, what we said last week, the use of, I used to have a major problem with the word, with, with this text right here. Um, David being the man after God's own heart. I used to question with all the things that David has done wrong, although he, one of the things David has never done wrong, he has never worshipped um, any um, idols, idols yeah. right? Out of all the kings of Israel, he has never worshipped, never even think about it. He was monotheist as you can be, right? He, kept, he held on to God. But we know about David, same with Bathsheba, we know... We know about him killing the um, Uriah, his man, he, the Hittite. And in my heart as a kid, I used to ask, how can David be a man after God's own heart? Well, knowing, um, again, as I said last time, the way we normally understood that phrase, a man after God's own heart, is somewhat, in, is totally incorrect, right? What God is saying, is, what the Bible says, God has sought out a man to rule over his people according to his will. Remember, Saul was the will of the people. The people asked for Saul. In fact, the word Shaul, Saul's name means the one they asked for. Right? That's what his name means. Mm -hmm. they, the one they asked for. The people asked for a king. But it's not God, it's not, as I told you last week too, two weeks ago, it's not like God didn't, didn't want them to have a king. In the, if you look at Abraham's um, covenant with God, God says there will be kings. If you read chapter, uh, Genesis chapter 12, if you read Genesis chapter 15, God promised that Israel will have a king, right? But however, God wanted to choose himself, right? But the people asked. They chose for themselves. So, so 
So again, um, I, 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 again for for the grammar head, the syntax heads, um, you know, it's not an adjectival phrase. It's an adverbial phrase, meaning the verb, meaning the phrase um, a man after God's own heart is not modifying David. It's modifying God's action, the verb, right? A man according to God's will, according to his own choosing, right? Even in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 21, you could see it's the same wording, right? For the sake of your, David is talking, for the sake of your own word, according to your will, right? It's the same way it's written in Hebrew, right? You have done this great thing and made it known to your servant. This means God is choosing according to his own will. Like he did Jacob over Esau, like he did Rahab the prostitute, like he did Ruth the Moabite. Not because there's anything like he did for us, for you and me. Not because there is anything good in us, but he, according to his own will, he chooses us. Right? Because for me, I think it was because something was good in David. And I'm not, not that I'm saying there's nothing good in David, but I was giving. More so when we think it that way, I was giving the praise to David, right? Uh, he did something to be God's, after God's own heart. But it's not because he did anything to be, uh, um, to be after God's own heart, but that's the man God shows. In fact, sometimes God do it. You will not see the reason why God, why God do those things a lot of times. Because men look at the outside. We'll talk about that later on. But God looked. On the inside, right? So God does not go according to appearance. Um, um, so the king would, God always had a will for kingship in Israel. The king would come, there were, there were some rules. The king would come from the tribe of Judah, okay? Because he said the scepter will not depart from Judah. And the scepter is what the king carries, right? Um, David, David is from Judah and Saul is from Benjamin. So that would not be God's choosing. And then also God had qualification for the king. Right? He had restriction for the king and he had duties for the king that the king must meet. The first qualification, again, must be chosen by the Lord. And then it must, it must be Israelite from Judah. So the restriction... They could not have too many horses, especially from Egypt. Why? God, horses at that time, the bigger horse, the more horse you had, you became the military power, great power. Uh, you know, like how we have tank today, and you see how Ukraine was asking the United States for tanks, certain th tanks so that they could fight Russia. So, so, so when you have those horses, that means you had power. And God, in, in the, the, the horse coming out of Egypt was like the mightiest, the best of them. God wanted them to depend on him. Don't depend on your horses, on your chariot, but depend on me. Not too many wives, because they will turn your heart away from God. Uh, because every time you marry a woman from another country, you got to do alliance with that country. Then, again, what is covenant? Mm -hmm. What is covenant? Yeah, but what's the word? I use a lot. Extended kinship. Extended kinship. Extended kinship. When you're in covenant with somebody, their family, distant family, becomes your family now. So that means that means when you begin to intermarry those other countries, they become your family now. So and God, God wanted you to destroy them. Now you're making them part of the tribe, right? Not too many silver and gold, okay? Um, and, and if you look at this, you'll see what happened in the, in the life of Solomon. I mean, all these things here was part of Solomon's. And they, for according to researchers, um, silver in the time of Solomon was like pennies on the floor. Okay? Yeah. The, the, the duty of the king was to copy the Torah before the priests, right? He had to copy the Torah and read and study the Torah every day and obey the Torah. Okay? So that was the duty of the king. The Torah? The, 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 the Torah means law. The book of the law. The first five books. The first five of Moses. Yes. 
on Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Those are the Torah. So they had they had to do that, right? It, so. Did you say Saul didn't do it though, but David did? Yeah. Did copying. Yeah. And, um, and reading of it every day. And Saul did not. Okay. Yes. Saul did not. Yeah. Some of it he kept. Some of it right. didn't. You never heard. At least I can't remember even now reading reading to prepare this Bible study that Saul had many wives. No. Right? He had a few, but... Actually, how many... I think I've only... Saul, I've only read one wife so far. I'm not saying he doesn't have many, but I can't remember okay. how many wives that he had. Well, what I'm saying is he didn't have too many. Right? right? Um, how many did David have? Obviously, we know Solomon, but... How well, David had... Michal, which is the youngest daughter of Saul. Yep. Um, he Abigail. had Abigail. Abigail. Um, the wife of um, what's his name? Uriah. No, that was Bathsheba. No, no, was he, was he had he had Bathsheba. Yep. He had somebody else. Uh, actually, I have it here. I can't okay. remember her name. So I know four wives David had. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know four wives David had. <laughs> yes, yeah. He's so, so God, re so God rejected David. God rejected God rejected David. God rejected Saul. So He sent Samuel to the house of an Ephra Eph Ephratite named Jesse, who was from Bethlehem in Judea, the tribe to whom He promised the scepter will never depart from, to anoint one um, of His uh, um, of His eight son, okay, as king. So upon arrival, Jesse saw so, um, Eliab. He said, surely. See, what we have to understand is that we have to always check ourselves as people of God. Even the men of God, right? Sticking, listen to what Samuel says. Surely, right? This must be the one. <coughs> right? But God says, uh-uh. Not my choice. Men look, at, men look at, at the outward appearances, but God looks at what's in the heart. Right? Um, and, and we have to be careful as men and women of God not to think that because we're men and women of God, we always make the right decision. That's why our, our decisions have to be made in prayer and in the search of God's word. Okay? Um, they passed one after another. Neither, <clears throat> neither of them was, was God's choice until they sent for David, the youngest son. Right? Upon David's arrival, God said to Samuel, rise and anoint him. This is my choice, right? Mm -hmm. This is my choice. Now, uh, grow up in the church sometimes, preachers are always looking. That's why we have to be careful because then generation after generation goes in thinking. I I'm going to talk about a lot of stuff regarding that. Uh, sometimes people are looking, you know, they're missing content for their sermon. And they kind of add things to the sermon mm. to try to make it relevant or to try to make people move, right? Mm. Uh, JC did not, again, we were like, it's, it's almost like we were making it like Dave, JC didn't like David. Neglected. No, or neglected him. Right. Like Cinderella up in the town. Exactly. Right. And all my life when I was growing up, 14 years old at church, when I heard a sermon, it was almost that way. No, he was the youngest. Most of the time, people are thinking that if they come in to anoint the king, you know. It's the oldest, or? You know, the oldest, you know? And that's what it was in that time anyway. You can't skip seven sons to get to David. Right? Go ahead. So, uh, no, that, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. So that was the tradition. Sometimes what we have to try not to do as well is to bring the Bible to our, our time and our culture. Mm. Right? Leave the Bible in, 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 in its culture, right? And, and then trying to study who we are and study the Bible and find where we can, um, you know. I think, what's his name, have a great book for preaching called um, Preach Between Two Worlds. Right? Between Two Worlds. The world of the Bible, the world of now. How do we bridge the gap? Right? Between two worlds. Right? So, yeah. So, it's not because he didn't like his son. Okay? It's just he was the eighth son, the, the youngest son, right? So 
So of course he had to go through all of them. Do you right? know how old he was at that time? Was he a child still or no, was he no. now a young man? No, I'm going to talk extensively about that. So okay, let me okay. not answer that right okay. now, right? Um, so Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel, Samuel then went to Ramah. When Samuel anointed David, God's Spirit came upon David. And at that same time, God's <coughs> Spirit left Saul. There's a change in God. Right? As God's Spirit came upon David, and the Bible says God's Spirit. See verse 13, and in verse 14, the Bible says, Now the Spirit of the Lord has departed from Saul. Okay? And an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. I don't want to talk a lot about that. <laughs> yeah, right? That's that's huge. Yeah. What does again some of those things that makes us question? God is still sovereign. Right? He's still sovereign, just as it, he did with um, Job, right? When the devil, the devil could not just go and attack Job. He almost had to come to God and ask God for permission, right? Because what did he tell God? Yeah, I want. I really want to attack him, but don't you put edge or an edge around him, right? So why don't you take that edge around him and see see if he's not going to curse you to your face? That's it. Very well. Go ahead, right? So God is still sovereign. There are things that God still um, there are things that God can do. Um, again, um, sometimes we use in English the word evil. Which, which it, um, I don't want to minimize the word evil here, but at the same time, the word bad is more appropriate in that sense in Hebrew. Bad spirit, mm -hmm. right? What you said? It's in, it's, it says harmful. A harmful sense. spirit, a bad spirit, mm -hmm. right? But, but guess if you look at anything bad, harmful, you could like look at it as evil, evil as well, right? But I'm saying that the word usually. Um, translate bad or harmful. Well, according to your other Bible study, it just means an absence of good. Yes, absence <laughs> of good. Absence of the Spirit of God. Right? Right? If the Spirit of God left him and God is good, then. Yeah. Therefore. The power of the Spirit comes upon him. So, so now, God, now God has anointed David. The Spirit of God is on David. To become king. David now is the legitimate king in Israel. According to God. It's not yet known to everybody. But according to God, David is now the man. But David has no tie to the, to the palace. Right. right? How will David find his way in the palace? In order to prepare David for kingship. God arranged for David an internship, an internship in the palace. <laughs> right? That's exactly what God did, right? That bad spirit that was that that was sent um, that was sent to torment Saul um, um, can only be subdued by playing anointed and skillful music, which David had. Which David had. So God is making a way for David to have an internship because if you look, David learned a lot uh, at the at the house of Saul. Okay. To prepare him for kingship. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 17 to 20. So Saul said to his attendant, find someone who plays well and bring him to me. One of the servants answered, I have seen a son of J.C. of Bethlehem who knows how to play the lyre. He is a brave man and a warrior. He speaks well and he is a fine looking man and the Lord is with him. Right? The Bible says, so whenever the spirit from, from God came on Saul, David would take up his lyre and play. Then relief would come to Saul. He would feel better and the evil spirit would live him. And as they say, your gift will make room for you. Right? Your gift will make room for you. Right? Um, you know, a lot of people are saying to God, use me, use me. With what? <laughs> no, seriously. 
Use me, use me. Again, even, even with, 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 uh, with Moses, God said, what do you have in your hand? Yeah. yeah. You got a stick. You got a stick? Yeah, right. what you, what, whatever you have in your hand, that's what God's going to use. Mm -hmm. We're saying use me, use me, but we're not preparing ourselves for God to use us. Right? And some people, you can see them, they may be on a pulpit, they may be teaching, they may, you could see that God wants to use them, but they don't have the language to. God will not do a miracle every time you step on the pulpit. <laughs> He's not going to do a miracle. No, you have to study. Prepare, yeah. Have to prepare. Show me a man in the Bible, God. Why, why do you think God chose Saul? Saul who did not want to be part of this at all. He was prepared. You think Saul was the most powerful man in that time? Probably not. Just like today. Who are the pastors you know? The one who wrote. The one who wrote. You know how many pastors and men and women of God who were very powerful preachers, we will never know, we'll never know anything about them. They never had anything in writing. We we know we know we know um what's his name? <coughs> Methodist um founder. Uh, Luther. I am um, not Luther, well you could say Lutheran, Luther. Um uh, we could say um uh, uh oh what's wrong with my head today? Um what's his name? It's one of my favorite preachers. I was gonna say Okay, we could say Charles Wesley, the Wesleyan. Spurgeon. Spur I was looking for Spurgeon. Spurgeon. Charles Spurgeon, right? They wrote. Calvin, they wrote. And that's why you know them. Right. But they might have been preachers that were more powerful. Probably have done more than they did. But you will not know them. Well, this summer's book was a perfect example of that. Yeah. He wrote that book on yeah. a train ride. Yeah. But it went on to become one of the most... Yeah, and guess what? Some of the, some of the people you know today, they didn't publish anything while they were alive. They had notes, just like we, we just saw in Chronicle. And then somebody came and put it together and, you know, assigned a name to it, which is good, right? So what I'm saying is that um, your gift will make room for you. God wants to gift us with things, right? Um, but we don't want to be prepared for God um, to use us, right? So it was David's gift that made room for him to enter the palace. Otherwise, how, would, how else would he get into the palace? Right. Saul's, Saul's family were, 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 were rich. Right. David's family was not that rich. <clears throat> so they, they would not have much tied to the palace at all, except that one. So did he become uh, best friends with Jonathan after he got to the oh, palace yeah, yeah, in yeah, an internship? Yeah, yeah. In that one? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Not before. They didn't know each other. Okay. Well, they're from Benjamin. Right, two different it's places. It's from Judah. Judah. Yeah. Yeah. It's two different places. Yeah. It's like Brooklyn and Massachusetts. <laughs> right? right. The, Yan the Yankees and the Red Sox, right? <laughs> right? So, yeah. So while David, in the, while David was in the palace, he was promoted. Right? Now your, room, your gifts make room for you, but then now you have to go to work. Yeah. Right? So David becomes... David got promoted and he became Saul's armor bearer. Okay? And now, please, sometimes when, when you're learning the Bible, I, I never used to make a differentiation between a cup bearer and an armor bearer. Okay? A cup bearer is the one who takes the food and the wine of the king. To make sure it's not poisonous. To make sure it's not poisonous. But an armor bearer is a totally different person. Right? So David came to Saul and entered his service. Saul liked him very much. And David became one, one of his armor bearers. He was not the only armor bearer. Yeah. But it's not the first time Saul met David. Where else did he meet him? David and Goliath. David and Goliath. Isn't that chapter 17? He tried. Yeah. Wait, yeah. That's yeah. 17. That's yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's chapter 16. David and Goliath is chapter 17. But, but it's, not, it's not really chronological as well. 
because I'm going to go there to show you it's not chronological. Uh, yeah, yeah. But but David was already. It, and there, that's a little bit problem. It's a little bit problematic at the end of 17 as well. Because Saul act like he didn't even know who David was. Yeah. I right? Think, I think he was. He didn't know that it was David that slayed Goliath. No, he and knows. He who. said, "Bring he, him to me." And then when he saw him, he knew who. Yeah, but he knew because David David went to him. They brought him, David to him. He put his clothes on David to go fight. Oh, that's right. He did. Yeah. He did. Yeah. yeah. He gave him his armor. He gave, yeah, trying to give him so his armor. Did he, did he not realize that it was David who ended up slaying him? No, no, I don't know what happened there, but something happened there. There's a little bit of discrepancy there, but... Well, you but, talked about the evil spirit. Yeah, he, he could have been out of his mind, yeah. not his right mind. Yeah. That, that could be, that could be. So, I'm yeah. just thinking he sent him out, and he wasn't thinking he had a chance to win. Oh, no, no. And then maybe after he, he found out that <clears throat> someone had killed him, he was like, bring him to me. I want to see who this was. No, no, but he was saying to Abner, who is this, right? Yeah. yeah. But so, there is a discrepancy. But I want to, I, very soon I want to show you that although it's chapter 16 and chapter 17, it's not chronological. Right, because it's, it's almost he was like still working for his father Jesse yeah, yeah, when yeah. they went to get him. So it's al it's almost like well, he was allowed to go back and forth. Oh, and yeah. I, I, and, but until Saul sent a, um, uh, a note to his father and said, "No, I want him to stay forever." With oh, right. yeah, he used to go back and forth, okay. right? Mm -hmm. Because again, he was getting rent, right? So he was a musician and then became an armor bearer and then he became able to fight by himself. Right, and then he was get you know now he was in charge of the of a of of a um you know a, a, a general well yeah general not general first but started right. fighting right. and breaking and then yeah. going up so he was getting um, higher and higher um, but what I want to say to you is it's almost like Genesis right see how the Bible Genesis chapter one give you the story. And then they go back to Genesis chapter 2 and retell you the story again. With more details that time. With more details that time. That's what's happening in 16 and 17. Okay. They or, or not give you the detail of the entire story, but choose a particular story to emphasize something. Right? To put emphasis on something that happened. And that's what's happening with chapter 16 and chapter 17 here, right? So, so now David is his armor bearer. What is an armor bearer? The term armor bearer is found seven times in the Old Testament. Armor bearers were young soldiers. So David was a soldier. I mean, who were selected by kings and generals because of their bravery. Okay? They were expected to stand by them in times of grave danger. Right. Certainly, the king will not choose a boy of middle age to stand with him in time of grave danger. Mm -hmm. Right? The armor bearer was practically the king's most loyal bodyguard. Okay? The armor bearer goes in battle with the king and stands guard over him while he sleeps. They have to be completely devoted to the king or the general. They have to be someone who can be trusted with any task, no matter how difficult or dangerous it may be. Right? I had a friend who used to say, a brave man is a stupid man who happened to be lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so they have to be someone who can be trusted with any task, no matter how difficult or dangerous it may be. They must be willing to lay down their lives for their master if necessary. In addition to being trustworthy and loyal, an armor bearer must also be physically fit and able to keep up with their master in battle. They must be skilled in the use of weaponry, I forgot the name here, that, uh, that their master wears for battle. Finally, armor bearers must have the courage to face any enemy, no matter how formidable they may be. Those who serve as armor bearers must possess all of these qualities in order to fulfill their duties effectively. So, example. Yes. Well, I believe they were all supposed to polish the armor, keep the swords sharp, all that stuff. Like keep the keep all the equipment in tip top shape. That was yes. part of their job. But also go in the battle with them and fight them. They yeah. have their own weapons as well. And I'm going to prove to you that 
with, with the example of Jonathan's armor bearer. Right? Look at, look at the duties of an armor bearer. Right? Jo One day Jonathan, son of Saul, said to his young armor bearer, and armor bearers are always almost young. A young soldier who, who you see really some good quality in. That one day this guy is going to be a warrior. Right? Yeah. Come, let us go over the Philistine outpost on the other side. But he did not tell his father. Okay? Jonathan's being brave. Right? Jonathan said to his young armor bearer, Come, let's go over to the outpost of the uncircumcised men. Perhaps the Lord will act in our behalf. Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. Do all that you have in mind, his armor bearer said. Go ahead. I'm with you what? Heart and soul. Step by step, I'm with you. Okay? So the armor bearer wasn't just somebody who just cleaned stuff. No, he was in the trenches, right? Jonathan said, come on, then. We will cross over toward them and let them use us, see us. If they said to us, wait, there until we come, we come to you, we will stay there where, where you are, where we are, and not go up to them. But if they say, come up to us, we will climb up. Because that will be our sign that the Lord has given them into our hands. So both of them showed themselves to the Philistine outpost. Look, said the Philistine. The Hebrews are crawling out of the holes they were, they were hiding in. The men of the outpost shouted to Jonathan and his armor bearer, Come up to see us and we'll teach you a lesson. So Jonathan said to the armor bearer, Climb up after me. The Lord has given them into our hands. Jonathan climbed up using his hands and feet. With his armor bearer right behind him. The first time fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer. Followed, and his armor bearer followed and killed behind Jonathan. Okay, behind him. And the first attack, Jonathan and his armor bearer killed some 20 men in an area but half an acre. Okay? So when the Bible so, so when the Bible says David was an armor bearer. You would not take a child with you in, into war. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay? Again, I just wanted to highlight that. The, the most famous armor bearer we know in the Bible is Uriah the, the Hittite. Right? That's interesting. Yeah, Uriah the Hittite. David, David man. Right? So before I proceed, there is a, let me take the time to correct a false assumption that, that is preached on many pulpits and in many Sunday school classes. That is called many classes. In fact, almost every illustrating picture between David and Goliath shows a little boy of middle school age fighting a giant. That is not so. Not that one. <laughs> Which one was that? Up top. top. Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah, that's why I say almost. Yeah. Right? Maybe a few, right? You'll find. But if you go on even on your phone right now, you go, but most of the pictures you will see, they're trying to show you. And I think sometimes we're trying to dramatize things, right? Just like, just like the three wise men. The Bible never said there's three wise men. You know why we keep saying three wise men? Because there were three gifts. So, and when we do plays in church, we usually have one kid bring a gift. So after a while, it stays in our head, three wise men. But there is no such thing as three wise men. There were many that came. It wasn't just three. So you're saying VeggieTales is wrong? Yeah, VeggieTales was wrong. Oh. <laughs> I still think, you know, just picturing him swimming in the armor. He's just, you know, unable to carry the armor. Yeah, and that's, that was another, again. Yeah, this that, one is a boy. Yeah. And, and, and that's a bad assumption. So, so that's what I want to talk about right now. Let, let's, let, let's go with me for a second. These assumptions stem from the fact, they came from somewhere, right? The, the fact that the Bible said David was the youngest of his brothers. In, his, in our mind already, we already have a little, right? He was the youngest of his brothers. Okay? Um, okay? Second, Goliath underestimated David's appearance. Right? Meanwhile, the Philistine with his shield bearer in front of him, right, kept coming closer to David. He looked David over and saw that he was what? 
little more a than a boy. A little more than a boy. He wasn't a boy. He was a little more than a boy, meaning he was a young man, right? Probably in his 20s, early 20s, probably. But again, that's the time men goes into the army, right? Early 20s, right? Early, late, late teens, early 20s, somewhere around there, right? Um, third, David said to Saul, right? Now watch this. The, uh, then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on, on, uh, on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. That's what the Bible says. They say it was too heavy. Or too big. And they say it was too big. He was not used to that type of armor. Because if you're going to fight, you got to fight comfortable the way, you, you know, the way you... Like I fight. always pictured him as a little kid wearing armor that was way too big. But that's because that's how it's, it's been taught, right? Especially when you're a kid in church, yeah. right? That's how it's been taught, right? And then when you do plays in church, you are trying to dramatize it, illustrate it, then you kind of go a little extra, right? Um, yeah, so it's the same thing when we're showing the devil in any play at church or in anything. We point. show scary I creature. But when the Bible says this, the devil is the angel of light. Right? So that's the reason why sometimes some we always mistaken thinking why when the devil comes, it's gonna be a scary demon. No, no, the devil sometimes comes as a friend. The devil is a fallen angel, right? That was cast out of heaven, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I cannot go in these. He said to Saul, because I'm not used to them. So he took them up. Not because they were heavy, because he was the hammer bird. He was the one carrying them. Right? And remember in my definition I give you as armor bird, it had to be strong, very healthy to be an armor bird. Okay, so this not this could not be further um, than the truth. David was a grown man of marriage, age, and military age. How do I know that? Um what what was what what was the what what did Saul say he's gonna give to the person? His, his, his daughter. His daughter. Tax exemption. <laughs> 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 that'd, that'd be good. <laughs> well, he didn't have to pay taxes to the, the Well if he marries that, I'm sure he's not gonna have to pay taxes, right? That's right. But what I'm saying is it was his daughter. And guess guess which daughter? The oldest one. Right. It wasn't the youngest. Mikael right. was the youngest one. That wasn't the daughter he promised to David. Micah. He just, he just, he, he just kind of. Oh, he tri noticed he that. Tricked he no, he tricked David. He gave the daughter to another, to someone else. In fact, the only reason David got to marry Mikael is because Mikael was really in love with David. Okay? So, so. Um, yeah, so, so again, when, when David, when, when Saul's um, attendant was describing David as someone to come and, and be in um, Saul's service, listen to what he says, one of the servants answered, I have seen the son of Jesse of Bethlehem who knows how to play the lyre. He is a what? Brave man. Brave man. In fact, I, I looked at the Hebrew this morning. It's an ish, a man, not a na'ah, not a boy. Right? The Hebrew was not na'ah. Na'ah means boy. They used the word ish, man. So David was a man, right? And a warrior. Who's going to call a boy a warrior? Right? He speaks well. And he's fine looking man. Right? And the Lord is with him. You see all the quality that he had? Mm -hmm. He was a man, right? Uh, by the time David was made one of King Saul's armor bearers, um, it was because he was of military age. Okay? Um, moreover, 
It was not, it was not David who went to Saul and said, I want to fight the lion. David was not doing somebody, David went, told his brother when he, when he went to the camp and said, Who is this uncircumcised? Um, you know, um defiled the army of God, right? And then he says, I can fight him, right? Somebody went and told Saul. Oh, that's that that's a guy who said he could go and stand toe to toe with um with with um Goliath. So it wasn't David who went to Saul, right? What did um he says what David said was overheard. You hear that? And reported to Saul. And Saul sent for him. Right? So David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of the Philistine. Do you hear, you hear David's conversation? A little boy is going to talk to the king that way, let no one lose heart on account of the, you know? Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, you are not able to go out against the Philistine and fight him. Not because he was a boy. He was an armor bearer. Right? He, although he was a soldier, but at that point he was not fighting alone. Right? He was in somewhat in training to become a warrior, a real warrior, right? Um, why you should not, why you cannot fight him alone? You are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. I mean, he has a lot of experience. We need a guy who has a lot of experience in fighting, right? To do that. But David, David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and, res and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, because he has defied the army of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the power of the lion and the power of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, go, and the Lord be with you. Fourthly, David was of married age. The prize of King Goliath was to marry Saul's oldest daughter, Mary. Okay? So David was not a little boy, but a young, brave soldier in the service of the king. And he happened to become a national hero because of his bravery, right? And no one saw this coming. Not Samuel, not J.C., his father, not his brothers, not Saul, not Goliath, okay. but only God. Man can only see what's on the outside. And looks can be deceiving. God is the only one who knows the heart of the man. Right? Men look at the outside, but God looks at the inside. Um, any questions? I mean, Saint David probably saw it too. But no? Since he was the one that went there. Probably, yeah, probably did see it, yeah. But again, probably see it better because now the Spirit of the Lord is upon him. Right? Okay. Now that I have gotten that out of the way, to really understand what is going, yeah. Okay. Sorry, my, so my question was: so he he was in fact already Saul's armor bearer mm -hmm. when he went to fight Goliath. It was just that at that time he was allowed to go back and forth, so he had been back at home when they went and got him, right? Yeah. Or it's because it said he came to bring his brothers some food. Yeah, because they were they were. They were, they were already soldiers. So he was, he was an armor bearer. Already. He was whose armor bearer was he? Saul. Was Saul at the battle? Yeah. Was Saul at the war? No. No, so he's not there too. Okay. His job is to assist the king in fighting. So he in was, battle. Okay. The reason why he wasn't there is because Saul was not there. He's Saul armor bearer. Okay. It's not Jonathan's armor bearer. It's not um what what was Eliab. Yeah. No, well, yeah, he's not Eliab Hammerberg. He's not um, Abner. Abner. Abner, the general of the army. He's not Abner's Hammerberg. He's Saul's Hammerberg. Okay. And Saul is not fighting. Okay. All right? Yes. Go ahead. I was going to say, if he was Saul's 
Saul's armor bearer, and the armor bearers were made out to be like this brave and could perform all these tasks. Why do you call him such a boy? No? Why do you call him such a young man that he couldn't go fight uh, Goliath? You can't do this. Well, it's it's like, okay, so. So he was in training? Like, so, like so, just a beginner? Or? So let, let's say, let's say, uh, let's say, um, um, this is my young man here, Monsieur Henri. Okay? Say so he's in the army, right? And he's doing well. Um, it's a bright young man. Everybody's looking at him and saying, oh, this guy has something. Potential. Right? But he's Blood, 18. So a lot of potential, yeah. right? Um, and then, you know, and then he's going, you know, we some, some guy from Russia who's in the KGB comes and said, Bring me an American! Mm -hmm. You know, it's about 45, you know, 30 something, whatever it is, but the experience man. You're not looking to bring a young man, right? You probably want another experienced guy, right? An experienced guy to go fight him. That's what Saul is saying. I don't think you have the experience. You may be brave, right? But I'm still cautious about him because he's been fighting for a long time. And let's not forget that Saul liked him. Saul liked him because yeah, Saul he sang to him. He cured him of his ailments with the with the sp bad spirit. He obviously liked him enough to that. promote him. So he, oh, he did he the spear at him three times. Oh no no no! He at that he point he really loved David. He loved him, so he wouldn't necessarily yeah, that's want to. You really loved David yeah. until they sang the song. It's like me chucking a spear at Henry three times. Saul <laughs> Saul Saul killed <laughs> what? His thousand. His thousand days and his ten thousand. That's when things turn around, right? Okay, let's so continue. He, I was just saying, like, out of personal, he might have said, no, you can't have my personal armor bearer because he likes no, no, you enough. No, no, you can't have... Yeah. Let's send somebody with more experience. I yeah, know. no, no, you have to send somebody with more experience. I know. Okay. In fact, I'm going to show you what it's supposed to be. Give me a little bit. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. because right. remember, everything... It's not just a little fight here. Remember what the fight was. Whoever wins will be the subject of the other. Everyone in the country, right? So you're not going to bet on this young guy, no matter how brave he is, right? You want somebody. Probably if Abner said, let me go fight him. Abner is the general of the army. Right. Then you could say, okay, I see, right? Okay, so 1 Samuel chapter 17 is not, so now we finish with 16, is not continuing the story. It is simply bringing emphasis to a major story that took place during David's time in Saul's service, right? However, there is still a bigger <coughs> picture and purpose for 1 Samuel chapter 16 to 1 to, to Samuel chapter 18. Right. So in chapter 16, God rejected Saul as king, the will of the people, and chose David as king according to his own will, right, and choice. God's spirit left Saul, and God's spirit came on, on David. Now chapter 7, 17, right? The last student shouted to the ranks of Israel, why do you come out and line up, right? Um, I don't want to read everything because I'm fighting with time. He said, in the feast I said, the last verse 10, this day I defy the armies of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. On hearing the Philistine words, Saul and all the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. Right? Yeah. Who is he asking for to fight? Who's Goliath asking for? The best man. The best fighter. Yes, who's the best fighter? Probably Abner or. No, he's asking for Saul. For Saul himself. Yeah, Goliath is head and shoulder above all the Philistines, right? He's the giant champion. Mm. Saul is a head and shoulder above all the Israelites. Isn't that what the Bible says? Oh, yes. Yeah. There was a Benjamin, a man of standing, whose name was Kish, son of Abiel, the son of um, Zero, the sons of Becherath, the son of Aphia, of Benjamin. Kish had a son named Saul, as in some, a young man, as could be found anywhere in Israel. And he was what? A head, a head taller, taller than anyone else. He was a head taller. So if there's a giant in Israel, he's the equal. He's the guy that should go and fight. He's the giant. Mm -hmm. 
So if, if Philistine has a giant, the comparable giant to go fight him is Saul. Yeah. Yet the Philistine calls for a head to, to head battle, someone to go toe to toe and fall strong. Who went out to fight Goliath? Who stood shoulder to shoulder with him? David. God had already made provision because his eyes saw otherwise. He saw a giant in David's heart. He knew that he knew that Saul was not going to fight that battle. Okay? What's the purpose of this story? The purpose of this story is to prove the point that Saul is no longer king. God has rejected him. And David, the newly anointed king, has replaced him. Remember, the king must be what? Isn't it what we learned in the, in the Torah, the five book of Moses? In order for them to become a nation, they had to be people and they had to have a king. But what was the first thing the king was supposed to be? A warrior king. That's why back in the days, the king didn't sit in the, in the White House and send young men to war. No, they went to war with them. In fact, they were in the front line. So you have to be a warrior to be king. That's the reason why Jephthah, they wanted Jephthah to rule over them. Because he was brave, he was strong, he could fight. Even though they despised him. Because he was the son of a prostitute. His brothers despised him, but when they were in trouble, they cried for him, for help. And said, yeah, he could rule over us. Because in order for you to be a ruler, you had to be a warrior. You had to be able to fight. That was the first thing he had to be able to do. So before he became, um, becomes before you become a governing king, you have to become a warrior king. Is that what God did? He became their warrior king, and he became their governing king. Right? So David, the anointed king, became the warrior king that day. He went head to head with Goliath and defeated him. <clears throat> When the, when, when, when the men were returning home, after David had killed the Philistine, the woman came out from all the towns of Israel to meet King Saul with singing and, and dancing, with joyful songs and with um, timbrels and lars. As they danced, they sung, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his tens of thousands. So Saul was very angry. The reference displeased him greatly. They have credited David with tens of thousands. He taught, listen to it, but me with only thousands. What more can he get but what? The kingdom. The kingdom. Yeah. The moment he stepped up to fight, head to head, he became the warrior king. And now the only thing that is left is for him to sit on the throne. David said with his own mouth. And that's the reason now he despised David. Okay? So chapter 18. There's something else that happened in chapter 18. Jonathan transferred the governing power as king to David. After David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan came one, came one in spirit with David. And he loved him as himself. From that day, Saul kept David with him and did not let him return home to his family. It was from his family. Ah, gotcha. Okay? And Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Jonathan took off the robe he was wearing and gave it to David along with his tunic and even his sword, his bow, and his belt. Hmm. What did he do? He gave him his tunic. Gave him his sword. Basically gave up his kingship to his him. Bow and his bow yeah. yeah. and his belt. And transferring the power. Because it should have gone to him. As He's the next in line. So, yeah. By taking his clothes off. What does clothing, if you ever study clothing in the Bible, um, it's, it's, power. it's, yeah, it, but it's power, it's redeeming, right? It's to make them become kingship as well, right? Right. Um, yeah. Again, what did what did Micah say to David when he was dancing before God? When he took his clothes off? Oh, oh yeah, and she thought he looked undignified and awful and was embarrassed of him. So if you if the prince gives you his clothes, he just dignified. Mm -hmm. Same with the uh, prodigal son. He he put, the father his, put robe his robe on him. To Same with God him. in the in the garden after Adam and Eve sinned. He put his clothes on him. That means I'm not going to do away with you. I'm not done with you. 
isn't the father of the prodigal son also given this ring? Yeah? Yeah. Significant ring, yeah. Okay? So, so John is supposed to be next in line. He's saying to David, you are the true governing king of Israel. Because the Lord was with David, right? So the Bible says from there on, whatever mission, 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 5, whatever mission Saul sent David on, David was so successful that Saul gave him a high rank in the army. Now he's no longer armor bearer. Now he's, he has his own troop. Okay? This pleased all the troops and Saul's officers as well. Okay? So then Saul promised his daughter in marriage to David so that David could continue fighting. Because if he's that successful every time he goes fight, you know, we want him to fight some more. So I'll say to David, here's my older daughter, Mira. I will give her to you in marriage. Only serve me bravely and fight the battles of the Lord. For Saul said to himself, I will not raise a hand against him. Let the Philistine do that. He was also so, trying to so try. He, he hates him at this point. After the song. But he's still sort of setting him up for success by saying, well, I'm going to make you. Yeah, well, that's what God is doing. God, God, is, God is making the way. Remember, remember God put him Saul's in the. Saul's trying to kill him. Yeah, yeah but, Saul. But again, it's the same thing. Him his daughter no, that's what Saul said. Here he well, is well remember, remember, he's not going to do that. <laughs> He's not going to do that. He's, he's, he tricked him. He gave, he gave the daughter to somebody else. Remember Joseph's word. You meant it for evil, but God not meant it for good. For good. Yeah. So when he says here, I will only serve me bravely and fight the battle of the Lord. Was he being sincere when he says fight the battle of the Lord? Or is he just kind of being a little bit... Uh, no, no. Yeah, he wants him killed. Just like just the same thing David did to the Hittite. Right. That's what I'm saying. So Saul's being deceptive. He's, he's being deceptive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He doesn't want to do it himself. Right. At this point. Right? That must be what David wanted. Yeah, because he would look bad. <laughs> <laughs> he would do the he same thing. He would also look bad because all yeah. the people loved right. David so much. He doesn't want to look bad by going that's against another reason. So that's why he says, let the Philistines do it. Yeah, let the Philistines yeah. do it. If he keeps fighting them one day, one day right? Right? Yeah. right? So then he said to Saul, That's a good point, though. Who am I? What? <laughs> what is it? She said she was, David learned it from Saul. Yeah, well, yeah. again. And it was his armor bearer. They learned it from one another. Armor. Well, right. But, well, oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> um, who am I? And what is my family, my clan in Israel, <laughs> that I should become the king's son in law? So when the, when the time came for Merah, Saul's daughter to be given to David, she was given in marriage to Israel. <laughs> he promised him and he went to fight and he still did not give him the daughter, right? But then Saul, now Saul's daughter Micah was in love with David. And when and, and it's all God's doing too. You're gonna know, you're gonna see why. It's all God's doing. Because if he marries Mara, he might be dead. You might be dead. Because that's the difference between marrying a woman and marrying a woman who loves you. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Because the Bible never says Mary loved Saul. Right. But loved David. But Micah loved David. Right? So Saul and Micah was in love with David. And when they told Saul about it, he was pleased. I will give her to him. He told so that she may be a snare to him. <laughs> He's not doing it out of his heart okay. there as well. And so that the hand of the first time may be against him. So Saul said to David, now you have a second opportunity to become my son-in-law. Uh -huh. When Saul realized that the Lord was with David and that his daughter Micah loved David, Saul became still more afraid of David. And he remained his enemy the rest of his days. The first time coming, they continued to go out to battle, and as often as they did, David, David met with more success than the rest of Saul's officers. And his name became all over the country, right? Oh. Right? So now he's very well, well known. Uh, he went viral. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> David went viral, right? 
Uh, I mean, imagine this. Imagine that now. You you have you have the king's daughter in your arm, right? All the people. You just kill the. The, the giant of your worst enemy. They're writing country. songs about you. They're writing songs about you. Oh, you got you going viral. You going viral. <laughs> you, you going viral. <laughs> so then, so Saul make a first attempt while David was singing song because of the evil spirit that came to him. The first attempt to kill him, but then get a chance to. He made a second attempt um, to kill to kill David again. Right? But guess what happened? Watch this. Saul sent men to David's house to watch it and to kill him in the morning. But Micah, David's wife, warned him. If you don't run your if you don't run for your life tonight, tomorrow you'll be killed. Huh. Mm -hmm. So Micah let David down through a window mm -hmm. and he fled and escaped. Micah took an idol and laid it on the bed, covering it with a garment. And putting some some goat's hair at the head, right? A dummy. So when the men came, they looked. They saw the hair. They saw the body. They thought it was David, but David was already long gone. Long gone. But the Bible says Micah loved David. I never heard Mira right. love David. If she heard the father was going to do that, perhaps she would be on the father's side. Right? It's the same thing with Jonathan. Jonathan loved David so much, every time he heard something, he yeah, ran and go and tell, and tell David. Right? <laughs> David was so bad, David had to go and hide his family in Moab. You know where Ruth came from? Mm -hmm. The Moabites? He had to, his family, his everyone, had to go hide there in another country. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk a little bit about David and Jonathan. Now, let me tell you this much. I think if Jonathan was not Saul's son, he was going to be king. Uh, I mean, again, if God didn't say that, you know, the scepter will not depart Judah as well, right? Because out of all these characters, Jonathan. Samuel and Jonathan were as upright as, as you can be. I mean, you can't find a person more upright than, than Jonathan. <coughs> he, he had faith in the Lord. He respected the Lord. He, he respected the anointed of the Lord. He had character. I mean, he had all of it. And he had reasons to be jealous of David. He, and he oh, was a lot of reasons yeah. he was running for power. But guess what? To live, um, I'll say it at the end, but I'll say it now. What's the purpose of the book? I might say it right now. What's the purpose of the book of, first, of Samuel? To obey God is better than sacrifice, mm -hmm. better than power, better than anything. Obedience to God come above everything else. You know what God wants of you? You follow that, you cannot fail, right? And that's what, and that's what, that's the type of person Jonathan was, right. because he knew that David was chosen by God. His father knew that too. You will find out, but he chose to do differently, right? Yeah. So let's but let's talk a little bit about David and John. First Samuel chapter twenty, verse one to four, verse sixteen to seventeen, verse forty-two. I, I skipped some stuff. Then David fled from um, Nea at Ramah and went to Jonathan and asked, "What have I done? What is my crime? How have I wronged your father?" That he's trying to kill me. Never, Jonathan replied, you are not going to die. Look, my father doesn't do anything, greater or small, without letting me know. Why would he hide this from me? It isn't so. But David took an oath and said, your father knows very well that I have found favor in your eyes. And he has said unto himself, Jonathan must not know this, or he will be grieved. Yet, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, there is only a step between me and death. And David knew that too. That's only a step between me and death, right? Jonathan said to David, whatever you want me to do, I will do. Jonathan made a covenant with David. Listen to that. Remember that. Jonathan did what? Covenant. covenant. What do we say covenant is? Extended kinship, right? He becomes family with David, right? 
um, with the house of David. Um, Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, not just David, but with the house of David, everything that belongs to David, right? Saying, may the Lord call David's enemy to account. He's talking about his father there too. Right. And Jonathan had David reaffirm his oath out of love for him because he loved him as he loved himself. Jonathan said to David, go in peace, for we have sworn friendship with each other in the name of the Lord, saying the Lord is witness between you and me and between your descendant and my descendant. Listen to that. Between you and me, very important when you're reading the Bible, between my descendants and your descendant forever. Forever. Then David left and Jonathan went back to the town. Even when Saul was fleeing uh, from, um, David was fleeing from Saul. While David was at Ahoresh in the desert of Ziph, he learned that Saul had come out to take his life. And Saul son Jonathan went to David at Ahoresh and helped him find strength in God. He went to pray with them. Right? He went to seek God with them. Don't be afraid, he said. My father Saul will not lay a hand on you. You will be king over Israel. So he knew, right? Mm -hmm. You will be king. That's why he gave him the clothes. You will be king over Israel. And I will be second to you. Poor guy. He didn't know he was going to die. Right? I'm willing to take second place. I will be second to you. Even my father Saul knows this. So if he knows God chose David, right? What, what happened when God said to Moses, you're not going to make it? He accepted. Mm -hmm. Saul would not accept that. He would not accept the word of God. Again, that's, that's why he got it. So, so again, so there's a lot of things that he did. He may not have many wives and different, but then everything that was against God, he did. Right? Um, I'll be second to you. Even my father Saul knows this. The two of them made a covenant before the Lord. Then Jonathan went home, but David remained at Horus. David asked, uh, so, so, so I'm moving on here. The reason why I said when they make the covenant, and the covenant says, forever we'll have a lot, lasting relationship between me and you, and between your descendant and my descendant. Now I want to jump to 2 Samuel to show you something. Okay? 2 Samuel, they, um, Saul died, uh, Jonathan died, and then right after they died, um, you know when there's one kinship, they have to go and kill everybody. Everybody was afraid. Some of Saul's family started running away. Okay? And some of them were killed. Saul's, Saul's, cap, Saul's army, some of the guys in his army, some of the people in his family, some of the people in power, they were put to death. Right? But a lot of them were running away. And after all of them ran away, David now is reigning by, by chapter 9, 2 Samuel chapter 9. Mm -hmm. David has the reign, he's king, he has peace, he's ruling over everything. And David asked, is there anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? But I knew David, David was just lying here. He knew there was someone who left. As good of a friend he was with Jonathan, then he know Jonathan had a son. Right. Is there anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now there was a servant of Saul's house named Ziba. They summoned him to appear before the king. And the king said to him, Are you Ziba? At your service, he replied. The king asked, is there no one still alive from the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness, God's kindness? Ziba answered the king, there is still a son of Jonathan. David wanted them to subside a little bit, to die a little bit before he did this. He is lame in both feet. He is lame in both feet. How did that happen? That Samuel chapter, that's when they were running away. Chapter 4. Javan, son of Saul, had a son who's, who was lame in both feet. He was five years old when the news about Saul and Javan came from Jezreel, that they died. His nurse picked him up and fled. They were running away with him, but she hurried to leave. He fell and became disabled. He was dropped. Right? 
And that's how he became disabled. Now, he was disabled. You know that in the law, in Leviticus, I, I, because of my phone, I could not, you know, I have to give access to my computer. It was hard for me to work today. Could not find the exact place. But in Leviticus, if you're lame, you cannot come before the king. It's illegal. You cannot even come in the presence of the king. Now, here's this kid, Mephibosheth, who is Jonathan's son. David wants to show kindness, but now he's lame. Now he, he's crippled. And it's illegal to be in the presence of the king being crippled. David still asks, where is he? Ziba answered, he is, the, he is at the house of Machir, son of Amiel, in Lodabar. Lodabar is a place of nothing, right? Just like Nazareth, mm -hmm. right? So King David had him brought from Lodabar, from the house of Machir, son of Amiel. When Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay him honor. David said, Mephibosheth, at your service, he replied. Don't be afraid. David said to him, For I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore you to all the land that belonged to your grandfather Saul. And you will always eat at my table. Wow. The king is violating the law. Yeah. Why? He's in covenant. He's in covenant. Mephibosheth bowed down and said, What is your servant that you should notice a dead dog like me? Then the king summoned Ziba, Saul's steward, and said to him, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. You and your son, that means going to be pretty rich. Yeah. You and your son and your daughters, you and your servant, ought to farm the land for him and bring the crops so that your master's grandson may be provided for. And Mephibosheth, grandson of your master, will always be <coughs> at my table. Okay? You always eat on my table. Then Ziba said to the king, your servant will do whatever the Lord, the king commands his servant to do. So Mephibosheth ate at David's table like one of the king's sons. Mephibosheth had a young son named Micah, and all the members of Ziba's household were servants to Mephibosheth. And Mephibosheth lived in Jerusalem because he would always eat at the king's table. He was lame in both feet. So they want, you know why they're saying that, right? right? They want to show you that he should not be there. But but when you're looking at this, what does this remind you of? Us. Yeah. 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 Also should not be at God's table. Right. But he made a covenant. But because he made a covenant with us. with us. Though your sins are as covenant, I will wash them. Come, let us reason together. Come sit at my table. And though your sins are red as color, I will wash, though they, I will wash them white as color. Though they, though they be red as crimson, right? I will turn them to wool. We're not supposed to be at God's table. We're not supposed to. But, but, but he shows us favor for Jesus' sake. For Jesus is sake. Right? right? So, so that's why covenant is very important. When you marry somebody, you're in covenant with them. Right? So, so again, that's that's exactly um, what happened, and that's what I wanted to show that. Anyone has a question? Maybe not so much a question, but when you said that. David had to overrule like what the, the law was the law, mm -hmm. but he had to kind of like like it's the king. Well, like kind of like what you said in the sermon a few weeks ago, like the veto. Yeah, he vetoed. He vetoed himself for Jonathan's sake. Yeah. Because you gotta remember, just like the Bible says, when it comes to the law and grace, you know, a, a, a covenant that was established way before another, the other cannot override it. David was in covenant with David, with Saul before with Jonathan before he became king. Right. So he cannot violate that. 
Because now he's king. Right? Now he's king. In fact, to violate that, the only way to violate that is to step down from the kingship. Because you already were in covenant before he became king. Right? Yeah. Hmm. So David had to run a lot of places. David went to Gath to, to go and hide. Okay? And you know he fought the people of Gath. And when he got there, he acted like he was crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's the only way they let him live. Yeah. Okay? Um, David acted like he was, um, you know, um, um, drooling, drooling and <laughs> like he was a madman. That's, 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 yeah. that's the trick he used. That's why I did. Because he, he was safer in the camp. Just imagine this. He was safer in the camp of his enemies than in his own country. Mm. That's how bad things were. Right? That's how bad things were. So Saul picked 3,000 men of the finest soldiers to go after David every day. Okay? To go after David. Now let's sit here for a second, just for a second. Let's talk about this. This has been years since God, since God anointed David as king. But yet David has to go through all that before he sit on the throne. Right. Isn't it the same thing with Joseph? Yeah. Okay, God, you know, he's got men at him, right? But when he Goliath, he didn't use the sword and stuff. He just used a stone. Man. Yeah. Now, that's it. So. Yeah. Well, God was with him. God helped him, right? Mm -hmm. But yet, he suffered so much. Mm -hmm. Because for, for most of us, if God says he's going to do something for us, it better happen tomorrow. <laughs> Is that the same thing that happened with Joseph? Your brothers will bow down before you. Yeah, after he went to jail and slavery, slavery, and yeah, he was forgotten in jail, right? So sometimes we think that we we sell this, especially those people who are preaching those um, prosperity gospels, but not just the one preaching because we do that in any church. If God calls you, you must not suffer. Bad things only happen to bad people. Isn't it what isn't it what Job Job taught? Yeah. That was Job's, that was Job, Job's theology Job's until, friends. yeah, but that was Job's theology too. Because he was complaining to God, what have I done? I shouldn't suffer. That was his theology too. Right? So our theology is, well, if we serve God, nothing wrong should happen to us. No. If anything wrong happened to us, then God must not be with us. That's not true. Just because God called you, just imagine this. God called Jeremiah to tell him that no one will listen to him. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, his word with heart will harden their heart. Yeah. It almost seems like every single person that God called to do something big and the examples he gives us in the Bible, it, it never was instant. None of them. Look at Moses, 40 yeah. years in the desert from accidentally murdering that guy or whatever. You know, even Jesus when he yeah. was... You know, it's, it still took time. Well, it was never instant, and they went through a lot of trials during that time. But what did Jesus say to all of us? I mean, to his, to his disciples. If you want to follow me, what do you do? You have to pick up your cross. Pick up your cross. Yeah. And follow me. Yeah. It's not going to be easy. Right. No. It's not going to be easy. Right? Yeah, it's not it's going to be easy, right? Yeah. So so David went to God. Um, um, no, God. G-A-T-H, God. Okay? So David was running. I'm not going to read these because it's a lot, and our time is about to um, finish. But two times David spares Saul's life. Right? The first time, Saul was after David, and then he had to go to the bathroom. And he put his sword away, and while he's doing his thing, David saw him. David went behind him and cut a piece of his clothes to let him know that's in that's in chapter um, chapter twenty four. Okay, David let him know when David got afar, and David said to him, "Hey, 
if I wanted to, in fact, I want to read a little bit of it. Um, okay, so when David, when, when Saul went to relieve himself, okay, um, verse, verse 4, the man said, this is the day the Lord spoke of when he said to you, I will give your enemy into your hand for you, for, for to deal with as you wish. Then David crept up on notice and cut off a corner of Saul's robe. Afterward, David was conscience stricken for having cut off a corner of his robe. He said to his men, the Lord forbid that I should do such a thing to my master. The Lord's anointed. I lay my hands on him. But does, doesn't he know that he's no longer anointed? He knows that he's no longer anointed. It says the Spirit <coughs> left yes, Saul. But it's not, it's not your job. It's God's job. Right. Yeah. Okay. He's still in charge. Wait for God. If God is the one who called you, he'll make room for you. Right? Mm -hmm. It's not your job. Mm -hmm. Right? And I, by the way, I've seen this a lot when I was growing up in the Haitian churches. A lot of times the pastors get a little older. This young man come. All of a sudden, he's, he's great looking. He's, he can preach and teach. All of a sudden, doesn't know. And I don't care whether the pastor was not doing the best of jobs. But they would come and take the church over or split the church in two. You're going to pay the consequences. Mm -hmm. You don't touch God's anointed. Kind of when God puts somebody in charge, he puts them in charge, whether you like it or not. Yeah. Let him deal with that person. Not you. Not you. Not you. I can, I can serve under any pastor. It's not my job. In fact, the reason why I left the last church I was in is because there's a lot of people in the church that was trying to push me kind of ahead of the pastor. I'm like, no, man. No. This guy's been pastoring this church since before I was even born. And, and they're like, well, you know, he's, you know, he, he's not digging. Well, yeah, after he spent 40 years working, after 40 years, you want to cruise a little. Mm -hmm. I ain't talking about let's start a new service on Sunday. Let's do this. Let's do that. The guy isn't about to retire. He doesn't want to start anything new. I understand you want it. But at the same time, know that God has put him here. It's God's job to deal with him, not yours. Mm -hmm. What happened to Miriam? Anyone know who Miriam is? Aaron and Moses' sister. sister. Yeah. yeah, what happened to Miriam when he stood it. against Moses? Oh, oh, right. I forgot about that. That's yeah. right. That's judge her. That judge her. Right? That's why David knows. You do not touch God's anointed. You don't. Let God deal with them. He may be wrong, the person. Let God deal with them. I just I can't help but wonder if it were me. Because oh. <laughs> wouldn't I think to myself, well, maybe this is the opportunity God wants for him yeah. to go bye bye and for me to take over. Maybe God's using or me. Or he's trying to kill me, so why not kill him? Right. Right? It seems like he'd be justified in doing so. He yeah, you he could be anointed. justified. By our law. Right? But obedience is what? Better, Better than, than being justified. Yeah. I'm just saying, in my flesh, I would have thought, oh, look, how nice. God delivered him right into my hands while he's going to the bathroom. I can just take over right here and now. Yeah. I'm sure David thought of, <laughs> actually, the door <laughs> <laughs> David thought the same thing. Yeah. David thought the same and thing. And then he felt bad about it. But he's like, mm, mm. Right? Mm -mm. let me not touch the Lord's anointing. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Then David went, out to the cave and call out so, um, um, this day you have seen your own eyes how the Lord delivered you into my hands in the cave some urged me to kill you but I spared you I said I will not lay a hand on my Lord because he is the Lord's anointed right see my father look at this piece of rope of your robe in my hand I cut off the corner of your robe but did not kill you mm -hmm. See, see that there is nothing in my hand to indicate that I'm guilty of wrongdoing or rebellion. 
I have not wronged you, but you are hunting me down to take my life. May the Lord judge between you. May the Lord judge between you and me. Mm -hmm. And may the Lord avenge the wrongs you have done to me. Mm -hmm. But my hand will not touch you. And that means everybody under him as well. Yeah. Oh, what happened to the what happened to the soldier who found the, who who found um, Saul hurt? He kills himself. Doesn't the soldier he? told David he killed himself, whether he did or not, because there's two different stories. I don't know which one, right? Whether he did or not, what did David do? Killed him. Killed him. How dare you kill the Lord's anointed? Right? Mm -hmm. Even to that point, mm -hmm. right? Someone else did it, and he killed that guy. Right? You are pursuing me, a dead dog, a flea. May the Lord be our judge and decide between us. May, may he consider my cause and uphold it. May he vindicate me by delivering me from your hand. Mm -hmm. Okay? So he did that again. Again in chapter 26. David fell, um, Saul fell asleep. So, so is Saul man. Fall asleep. Right? And they were looking for David, but they fell asleep. Um, um, but David said to Abishai, don't destroy him when he found him asleep. Who can lay a hand on the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? As surely as the Lord lives, he said, the Lord himself will strike him. Mm -hmm. Or his time will come and he will die. Or will go into the battle and perish. But the Lord forbid that I should lay a hand on the Lord's anointed. Now get the spear and water jar that, that, that is near his head and let's go. Right? They want, they want to keep a souvenir to show him that they were there. Mm -hmm. So David took the spear and water jar and, and, and near Saul's head and they left. No one saw or knew about it, nor did any wake up. They were all sleeping because the Lord had put them into a deep sleep. Then David crossed over to the other side and stood up on the hill some distance away. There was a wide space between them. He called out to the army and Abner, sons of Ner, aren't you going to answer me, Abner? Abner replied, who are you? Who calls to the king? David says, you're a man, aren't you? And who is like you in Israel? Why didn't you guard your lord, the king? Someone come to destroy your lord, the king. What you have done is not good. As surely as the Lord lives, you and your men must die. Because you did not guard your master. The Lord's anointed. But he, he's sending a message to, to Saul. Right. He knows Saul is there, but he's talking to Abner. Aren't you supposed to be that big general? Yeah. The guy with experience? How come he fell asleep? How come he did not guard the Lord's anointed, right? Um, Saul recognized David's voice and said, Is that your voice, David, my son? My son? <laughs> <laughs> David replied, Yes, it is, my lord, the king. And he added, Why is my lord pursuing his servant? What have I done? And what wrong am I, am I guilty of? Now let my Lord the King listen to his servant's word. If the Lord has, a, the Lord has enticed you against me, um, then may, may he accept my, an offering. If however people have done it, may they be cursed before the Lord. They have driven me today from my share in the Lord's inheritance and have said, go, serve other gods. Now do not let my blood fall to the ground far from, from the presence of the Lord. The king of Israel has come out to look for a flea as one hunts for a partridge in the mountains. Okay? And then Saul said, I have sinned. Come back, David, my son, my son because you concerned in my life. I'm precious today. I will not try to harm you again. Should you have acted like a fool? Yes, you did. And have been turned, <laughs> I've, been, I've been terribly wrong. Here's the king's spear, David answered. Right? That, that one of your young men. Right? David having all this conversation with him, right? David reached to a point where David almost went to fight against Israel with the Philistine. The Philistine was giving Dave, David a place to stay. That's how bad things were in Israel for David, on the soul. And David was almost went to war against, against Israel. Um, because he was with the, the, the Philistine, right? So what is the big idea of the book? Of 1 Samuel? And Samuel said, he has, um, 
Has the Lord has great delight in burnt offering and sacrifice, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to listen than the fat of ram. For rebellion against God is as the sin of divination. When you sin against God, it's almost as if you went to the witchcraft, which the Lord detests the most. And presumption is as iniquity and adultery, because you have rejected the word of the Lord. He has also rejected you from being king. So, so again, remember we're still living in the time of the judges in some ways. Everyone did whatever was right in this. What was, what was Saul doing? Whatever was right in his sight. And David was doing whatever was right in God's sight. And to obey God is better than anything. So what's the lesson in this for me and you? Yes. There are people in this world who live the way of this world. But they speak. Mm -hmm. so they live the way the world is now, mm -hmm. and you think it's okay. But in God's eyes, it ain't. You're not living the way God wants you to live the way he wants. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what Jesus says in the book of Luke, right? Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? <coughs> Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Let me show you what it is like. It's like two men who went and built a house. When one built a house and he went down deep, deep until he found rock. And he, the house was built on great foundation. And those are the people who hold on to the word of the Lord. When you learn to, when you learn to, to please the Lord in one thing, it gives you strength to do it in the second and the third and fourth. But when you when keep disobeying God, the, more, the easier it gets to keep disobeying him. But the Bible says you're like a person who's building your house on sand. Mm -hmm. But the moment trouble comes to your life, you collapse because you are not built on the right stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just backing up a little bit. <clears throat> when David was talking to the general Ab Ab Abner. Mm -hmm. Abner, he says he fell asleep from the. He was supposed to be Protect the yeah. Is there any correlation about was it, was Jesus was was Jesus referencing sort of of that when he went to Peter and his disciples when he was in the garden praying? Would you not tarry with me for one hour? Yeah. Is that kind of like any correlation there? Yeah, I mean you could say that in some way, right? Because again, their job was to protect their right. The Lord, and right? It's to be with them, right? And, and they can't even do it for an hour. Yeah, but you could not tear with me for one hour, yeah. right? Yeah, that their duties, they were not, they were not upholding. Right. Yeah, that's what, that's what, um, that's what David was saying, to Abner, and I think that's the same thing Jesus was saying to the disciples, yeah. right? Yeah, but but overall, what we need to understand is this: is you know, obeying God's word. Being God's word is everything. No matter how hard it is, no matter how difficult it is, it must not be your preference. It must be your conviction. Because you want to pay the price. I don't care what it is. Please show me someone who knowingly, or unknowingly, right, but, but mostly knowingly, disobey God's word and not pay the price. Disobey God's word and not pay the price. You're going to pay. Nobody sins and get away with it. Right? All right. I have two answers. Two answers. Go ahead. For the things in the beginning. But I have to full disclosure. I asked the AI for the answers. Oh, yeah. The AI for the answers. Okay. So, um, Saul, it's only documented that Saul had one wife. Yeah. Else. Yeah. There is no other. Not to say that he couldn't have had otherwise, but there's no. Yeah. 
documentation, and there is a difference between a prophet and a seer. Mm -hmm. Maybe it'd be better if I read that Go answer. Ahead. Yeah. But, um, let's see. To look that up as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's on Wikipedia. But, yeah. A seer and a prophet yeah. are um, distinct roles. A seer is someone who receives revelation or visions from God, often providing insights into the future. On the other hand, a prophet not only foretells the future, but also serves as a spokesperson for God, delivering messages and guidance to the people. So mm -hmm. it says while there can be an overlap of the terms, it looks like a prophet does more. It's He's more of God's representative or a seer, just hears from God and says, this is what I heard. See, I always mm -hmm. imagined a prophet was one who hears from God and a seer was one who sees visions. Right. So one is seeing, one is hearing. Yeah, I mean, this is this is the that's AI. Something visually no, well, that's something visually. No, another. I, I will definitely give you my answer. Yeah, yeah. Next week. That'd be good to compare yeah. and see what. Yeah, but I don't want to. I'm not 100%. That's why I don't want to say. What did Wikipedia yeah, say? Was it very different? Similarly, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I will, I will answer that next week. Yeah, but as far as I'm concerned, you saw I have one wife. That's why I was like, yeah. I know you have one wife. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. One documented wife. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let's pray. Let's pray. Um, Dave, won't you pray for us, man? Father God, we thank you for this time tonight, God. Uh, we thank you that we can come together to learn more about the word that you've given us, Lord, yes. and uh, help us, Lord, to, to take these uh, this information, God, and, and not that we would be smarter sinners, God, but we would be regenerated, uh, God, that we would yes. be changed people because of what we learn here tonight, God. Yes. Help us, God, to take this these words and, and put them into practice in our life, God. I pray, God, that you would bless everyone, Lord. You would keep them all safe, God. That you would drive uh, alongside us tonight, God, and keep us safe. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.